history of symbolism shows that everything can assume symbolic significance. Natural objects like stones, plants, animals, men, mountains, and valleys, sun and moon, wind, water, and fire. All men made things like houses, boats, or cars, or even abstract forms like numbers in the triangle, the square, and the circle. In fact, the whole cosmos is a potential symbol. That's true. Even man, with his symbol-making propensity, unconsciously transforms objects or forms into symbols, thereby endowing them with great psychological importance, and expresses them in both his religion and his visual art. The intertwined history of religion and art, reaching back to prehistoric times, is the record that their ancestors have left of the symbols that were meaningful and moving to them. Even today, as modern painting and sculpture show, the interplay of religion and art is still alive. Arrangements of rough natural stones also play a considerable part in the highly civilized rock gardens of Zen Buddhism. Their arrangement is not geometrical, but it seems to have come about by pure chance. In fact, however, it is the expression of a most refined spirituality. As we say, the ancient centers and their crude outlines and faces, or the Hermes that developed out of boundary stones in ancient Greece, or the many primitive stone idols with human faces, the animation of the stone must be explained as the projection of a more or less distinct context of the unconscious into the stone. Yes, the primitive tendency to give merely a hint of a human figure and to retain much of the stone's natural form can also be seen in modern sculpture. Many examples show that the artist's concern with the self-expression of the stone is allowed to speak for itself. This can be seen, for instance, in the work of the Swiss sculptor Hans Eschbaucher, the American sculptor James Rosati, and the German-born artist Max Ernst. In a letter from Ma Jola in 1935, Ernst wrote, Alberto, the Swiss artist Giacometti, and I are afflicted with sculpturitis. We work on granite boulders, large and small, from the moraine of the Fond Gold Glacier, wonderfully polished by time, frost, and weather. They are in themselves fantastically beautiful. No human hand can do that. So why not leave the spade work to the elements and confine ourselves to scratching on them the wounds of our own mystery? Animal pictures. Go back to the Ice Age, between 60,000 and 10,000 BC. They were discovered on the walls of caves in France and Spain at the end of the 19th century. But it was not until early in the 20th century that archaeologists began to realize their extreme importance and to inquire into their meaning. These inquiries revealed an infinitely remote prehistoric culture whose existence had never been suspected. The existence 
had never been expected. Other cave pictures must have served magic fertility rites. They show animals at the moment of mating. An example can be seen in the figures of a male and female bison in the Tway Laudu Bay Cave in France. The realistic picture of the animals was enriched by overtones of magic and it took on a symbolic significance. The most interesting figures in the cave paintings are those of semi human beings in animal disguise, which are sometimes to be found besides the animals. And the farther back we go in time, the more primitive and close to nature the society is, the more literally such titles must be taken. A primitive chief is not only disguised as an animal, when he appears at initiation rites in full animal, he is the animal. Still more, he is an animal spirit, a terrifying demon who performs circumcision. At such moments, he incorporates or represents the ancestor of the tribe and the clan, and therefore the primal god himself. He represents and is the totem animal. In psychological terms, the mask transforms its wearer in an archetypical image. The animal motif is usually symbolic of man's primitive and instinctual nature. Even civilized men must realize the violence of their instinctual drives and their powerlessness in the face of the autonomous emotions erupting from their unconscious. This is still more the case with primitive men whose consciousness is not highly developed and who are still less well equipped to weather the emotional storm. Hello. The animal demon is a highly Hello. expressive symbol for such an impulse. Hello. The vividness and concreteness Hello. of the image enables man Hello. to establish a relationship with it Hello. as a representative of the overwhelming Hello. power in himself. Hi. He fears it and seeks to propitiate it by sacrifice and ritual. But in man, the animal being which lives in him as his instinctual psyche may become dangerous if it is not recognized and integrated in life. Suppressed and wounded instincts are the dangers threatening civilized man. Uninhibited drives are the dangers threatening primitive man. In both cases, the animal is alienated from its true nature. And for both, the acceptance of the animal soul is the condition for wholeness and a fully lived life. Primitive man must tame the animal in himself and make it his helpful companion. Civilized man must heal the animal in himself and make it his friend. Civilized man must heal the animal in himself and make it his friend. Civilized man must heal the animal in himself and make it his friend. Civilized man must heal the animal in himself and make it his friend. With man gone, will there be help for gorilla? With gorilla gone, Will there be help for man?
have initiatives dedicated this work to all the Western lowland gorillas in the Bronx Zoo. We celebrate the unique personalities and physical characteristics of each and every one of them. They are magnificent ambassadors for their species.